are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. I didn't mean to give everybody a heart attack. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess keeping things interesting. <laughs> How are you guys feeling tonight? Feeling good. I'm like oddly a little bit nervous. <laughs> oh. I'm getting well, a pre show jitters. Oh, yeah. That means it's going to be a great show. <laughs> okay, we are we are live, so we can go. <laughs> oh, okay. Good evening. I'm Jamila Daria, director of the UMass Amherst Fine Arts Center. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for tuning in from around the corner and perhaps even from around the world. Now more than ever, we need the arts to remind us that the world is not only big and wondrous, but that we still need access to it. This evening is the first in a new series of online programming featuring performances, conversations, and interactive exhibitions showcasing the wide range of artistry we presented over our 45 year history. Before I introduce tonight's featured artist, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Hotel UMass, WRSI 93.9 The River, and WEIB 106.3 FM. I'd also like to thank our audience members who, upon hearing about the unfortunate cancellation of our spring season, generously donated their tickets back or exchanged them for gift certificates, and even a few who reached out in anticipation of subscribing next season. I'd also like to acknowledge the UMass Amherst Provost's Office for their continue, continuing trust of our mission to serve as a cultural hub, connecting our campus to the community. And last but not least, the artists. If not for them, we would have nothing to amaze our senses, transform our thinking, or ignite our spirit now and always. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce the soulful, multi-instrumental Haitian-American artist, Layla McCullough. Layla spent a part of an early part of her career with the Grammy award-winning group, the Carolina Chocolate Drops, and has enjoyed an active solo and collaborative career since 2013. She's released four albums, most recently The Capitalist Blues in, in 2019. Tonight, she'll play from her solo repertoire, and following her performance will be a post-show dialogue between Layla and the Vermont Jazz Center director, Eugene Newman. So please do stick around and add your questions to the comment section. Now, without further ado, I turn things over to you, Layla McCullough. Hi, everybody. Um... This is my first live stream concert um, in my, um, I guess this is like the den in my house. And um, yeah, it's been a very, very interesting <laughs> past few weeks. Um, this is actually the first time that I've been in my house without um, children running around and, and uh, nowhere to escape. So it also feels kind of strange to suddenly be alone, but exciting. Um, and excited to play you some tunes. Um, I'm going to start with a song called Les Places Sont to Me Sur la Table. And uh, if you're familiar with my work, maybe you've heard this song before, but um, you know, I'm, I'm here in New Orleans in Louisiana, and uh, I really fell in love with Louisiana music when I moved here. And uh, Cajun music and Zydeco are such a big part of that trying to understand, you know, uh, Creole culture, because that is uh, something that's really near and dear to me. My family's from Haiti. Um, and so uh, I started learning uh, how to play Cajun tunes on cello and um, discovered the music of uh, a Creole fiddler named Kenry Fontenot. And so um, just fell in love with his music. So the song, Les Places Sont to Me Sur la Table means all the plates on the table are set. And the first verse says, where can I find a do nothing job? Second verse, where can I find a woman who's hungry when I'm hungry? And uh, the third verse is, where can I find all the plates set on my table at my house? <laughs> Usually, for 
so surreal what we're living through. Um, I'm curious what someone like Langston Hughes would have to say about it. Um, I released my first album in tribute to Langston Hughes and uh, I'll play you a song from that record. This one's called Girl. She died in pain. She danced in sunshine and laughed in rain. She went one summer morning where the flowers spread the plain. She told everybody she'd be coming back again. Folks built her coffin and they hid her deep in the earth. It seems like she said, My body brings new birth. She went one summer morning where the flowers spread the plain. She told everybody. flowers and tall young trees, sturdy weeds and grasses to sway in the breeze. Sure she lived in growing things with no pain. 
dance in sunshine and laugh in rain. She went one summer morning where the flowers spread the plain. She told everybody she'd be coming back again. She went one summer morning where the flowers spread the plain. She told everybody she'd be coming back again. Coming back again. Coming back again. That song always feels good. I actually, I never get to play my cello enough in this room, so um, that's fun for me to be doing. Um, huh, which song should I play next? I'm gonna play a song. I feel like every set I ever play, it's really hard for me to not play this next song. Um, it's called Messi Bonjour. It was written in the 1950s by a Haitian guitarist named Franz Cassius. And um, his records are amazing. Um, I was doing research years ago, trying to find, you know, trying to connect with my roots. And um, I think I did a Google search called Haitian Folk Songs, and I found this album called Haitian Folk Songs. And that's how I learned about Franz Cassius, and uh, that's how I learned this song. This is one of the first songs I, I learned how to sing in Haitian Creole. And uh, the song is about being thankful for a good harvest. And it says, um, the rain is uh, falling and the corn is growing and all the children are eating, so let's dance. Our Father up in heaven says our misery is over. <laughs> sing another song in Haitian Creole. This one, uh, this one I learned from the very amazing singer named Coupe Cloué, who is also a very famous football player. 
um, and uh, like soccer, not Haitian, Haitian football. <laughs> and um, I don't think he actually wrote this song. I think this song comes from a, a poem. Uh, uh, and I don't know exactly what the poet's name is, um, but the song is called La Vie du Neg. And in Creole, that means the life of an old man. And uh, the song is talking about an old man who's been living in poverty. And it says, the soles of his shoes are as thin as crepes. And if the world is round, it's not his fault. Money doesn't fall in the pockets of poor people. We do what we have to do to get by. But at the end of the day, as soon as it comes in, it's gone. And uh, feels like a prophetic <laughs> message for our times. This is on my latest record, Capitalist Blues, which also was very aptly named. <laughs> La vie vienne capuchée sur le soleil, même si la terre rentre, c'est pas fait ma dernière. La vie vienne capuchée sur le soleil, même si la terre rentre, c'est pas fait ma dernière. La j'en pas fait beau, n'a pas ce ma dernière. Vous faites mon vie, sous la terre vienne, la j'en pas fait beau, n'a pas ce ma dernière. Vous faites mon vie. La vie vienne comme si sous rêve soleil, même si la terre c'est pas faute malheureuse. La vie vienne comme si sous rêve soleil. Même si la terre, c'est pas faute malheureuse. La chambre pas fait beau, la poche malheureuse. Vous faites pour me vivre sous la terre bénie. La chambre pas fait beau, la poche malheureuse. Vous faites pour me vivre sous la terre bénie. Les hommes et la chambre pas fait beau, la poche malheureuse. Les hommes et la chambre pas fait monnaie. Les grands contrées les dépensées. La vie bien est capuchée sur le soleil, même si la terre rentre, c'est pas faute ma dernière. La vie bien est capuchée sur le soleil, même si la terre rentre, c'est pas faute ma dernière. La chambre pas fait beau, la poche ma dernière. Vous faites pour me vivre sous la terre bénie, la chambre pas fait beau. So um, I want to play you one more song in this little set here. And I uh, just want to say thank you to everyone over at um, the Performing Arts Center at UMass Amherst for um, still making this, this mini show happen. Um, I was supposed to be there tonight. And obviously, everyone's plans have been completely upended. And um, you know, the silver lining has been able to spend time with my children. but. Um, just having an opportunity to continue playing my songs and assemble an audience is, um, is really, really precious to me. So thank you guys so much. And, um, you know, uh, when I think about what we are going through right now, um, I can't help but think about people who are detained, um, whether they're, you know, in our um, prison industrial complex for a crime they've committed or whether they're um, 
an asylum seeker from another country, maybe separated from their children. Um, and now we know that this virus is making its way, you know, through those populations as well. And, um, and I just don't want us to forget about those people. So um, I'm gonna play this one. This is the title track to my second album. This one's called The Day for the Hunter and Day for the Prey. And uh, I think a lot of the words that I wrote originally thinking about um, Haitian refugees coming to the United States, looking for a better life, um, apply to so many situations we see today. And uh, I'm holding all of those people um, in my heart while I sing these words. If I go away, I want you to pray not for me, for the souls who have gone away before. If I am to stay, I want you to pray not for me, for the souls who have stayed like me before. Day for the hunter, day for the prey. 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 Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. And um, yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> Is someone going to come in and talk to me now? <laughs> Thank you, Layla. That was a wonderful concert. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's really such a, it's a treat to, to hear you. Wait, hold on, I've got to turn this off. 
Um, so everybody, I just wanted to say to Layla that, that, that your music feels so important at this time. And the fact that we are here uh, and we can't interact with each other, that it feels <laughs> pertinent that we're, we're hearing music that is from the heart, but it also is music from an activist who is thinking about the people who are seeking asylum and the people who are incarcerated and the people who really do not have a voice right now. So I wanted to just let you know that that's something in particular that I really appreciate about your music. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy that invisible disease and you think about the invisible population, you know, that has to cope with that, so. And, you know, some of the songs that you play, that you actually, you didn't do much from your newest album where you, uh, Capitalist Blues is the title track. And then Money is King is another one of the songs and Aleppo is another one. And so I'm feeling that um, a lot of the songs that you wrote, especially in this most recent album, are based on um, your activism and based on the fact that the world is going through a lot of struggles and there's a lot of injustice. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering how you keep your sense of humor. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think I was born into a family where like sense of humor was part of survival, you know? Um, so there's that, but um, I think it's, you know, laughter is just so cathartic. Um, and so many of the songs that I find myself drawn to, um, you know, in the Haitian repertoire, um, and even a song like Money is King, which is a Calypso song by the Growling Tiger, um, are, are sort of based in humor, you know, and humor is based in truth. And mm -hmm. so um, I think that uh, it really is a, a coping mechanism, you know, um, having a sense of humor for all of us. Um, and then as a musician, I think, um, you know, you have to be able to, to well, my, my, what I try to do is to touch people's, you know, emotional center. And I think laughter is, is one of those. Well, you certainly achieve that. And, and I love in your videos, you always seem to end up with this mischievous smile at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even when it's a song like Capitalist Blues, which is so sincere, you know, and right. <laughs> that we have to listen to. I mean, yeah, Capitalist Blues is also just uh, very funny, you know, <laughs> it's like a blues about capitalism, um, which makes perfect sense to me. But I think that, uh, yeah, you, you have to, it, it's also full of sadness, you know, um, it's kind of, I think one of my more um, morose moments for sure, but it's, it's very dry. Right. Well, <laughs> true. <laughs> you dress so nicely tonight and in our phone call, you were all <laughs> you know, you dressed nicely. <laughs> and, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Well, what's it, what's it like being, you said this is going to be the first time in three weeks that you really had a time to perform. So, so what's it like being home, you know, not, not being able to tour? Tell us a little bit about your life now and your life three weeks ago. I think that, um, well, three weeks ago, I had just returned to New Orleans from Durham, North Carolina, where I was um, premiering a piece, uh, a theater piece, a multimedia performance piece that I've been uh, working on with uh, some collaborators called Breaking the Thermometer to Hide the Fever. Mm -hmm. in the archives of Radio Haiti and um, it was a pretty intensive you know process um, not only the artistic residency leading up to the premiere uh, but the performances themselves were you know super poignant and powerful and um, just kind of took a lot out of me and I kept on saying to myself once I get through this premiere mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be able to just go on tour, do my regular thing, you know, life is going to return to normal. And then life became extremely bizarre. 
Um, yeah. You know, I my daughter goes to um, a school called the Lycée Français here in New Orleans, and um, there was a um, supposed COVID nineteen case, and mm. so she had off a couple days, and then that Saturday, you know, it was just like every single day, like mounting news. And it became clear that my tour that I was gonna be on in France and Spain was not gonna be happening. Um, and then it became clear that like, you know, I had to take my daughter out of school. Um, I have almost two year old twins who were in a wonderful daycare program. And, you know, I just couldn't, I, I, I consulted with my pediatrician and he's basically telling me, you know, don't bring the kids to school. So then, Suddenly, I'm um, homeschooling a French immersion curriculum for mm. my five and a half year old kindergartner mm. and taking care of two year old twins wow. um, and cooking and, you know, trying to make the best of it. Um, and just more and more tour dates getting canceled um, through through certainly through the spring. And then, you know who knows what will happen um, beyond that. So it's a lot of uncertainty right now. And um, what I've been <laughs> describing to my friends at least this week is that I feel I've, I've reached the acceptance phase of grief, you know, because there is a lot of grieving of, you know, what could have been and what I wanted to happen in my life. Um, there's, you know, the loss of income for so many musicians. And, um, you know, it's like music is like, it's my livelihood, but it's also like my spiritual practice. So um, that feels very uh, vulnerable right now. Um, you had mentioned that the, the topic that you had uh, were working on at Duke University is called breaking the thermometer to hide the fever. That sounds especially relevant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no one doing that these days, right? No. That's just in the past. <laughs> Did yeah, you so that before the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. Yeah, I was already thinking about, you know, um mass repression and uh and truth um truth telling. Um because I've been studying um Haitian history particularly in the 80s and really the 70s and 80s um, and 90s um, and trying to understand, um, you know, Haiti uh, historically and culturally, its relationship to the United States. And um, I was approached by uh, Duke performances in 2016, um, seeing if I would be interested in creating a piece inspired by their archive. Um, they had recently acquired an archive for a radio station in Haiti, Radio Haiti, um, that closed in 2003, um, a few years after the assassination of its director, who was a man named Jean Dominique. And um, that, that proverb, breaking the thermometer to hide the fever, I believe it's a French proverb, but um, he used it to talk about, um, you know, mass repression of the Haitian people and, um, you know, a lot of the political forces in Haiti at the time. He was a, a fierce advocate for the promotion of democracy and a free press. And, um, and so I've been thinking a lot about, you know, the role of a free press and in, in ensuring that we have a democracy and thinking a lot about my Haitianness and, you know, m sort of my connection to bringing some of this story to light. Um, wonderful response. I've got some questions from people on Facebook and I'd like to address them to you. If okay. You. Um, Zach Louis says, what's the best way for folks to support musicians and artists during this crisis? Um, you know, I think everyone has different um, sort of methods of receiving support. Some some people are, you know, have PayPal's and Venmo's and they're doing concerts that you can donate to. Some people have a Patreon, um, you know, some, there are some organizations that are assembling funds to distribute to artists, um, certainly buying merchandise from people's websites um, and, and, and on other, you know, mediums, um, I think works. Um, 
I think that you'll find lots of different ways to support people if you want to support them, you yeah, know. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think uh, continuing to continuing to demand things of artists because I think a lot of us are feeling a little bit like, oh God, are we useful anymore? <laughs> Um, and I think we are needed and we are extremely useful. Um, but, um, you know, we, we uh, have always struggled um, to make that into financially viable <laughs> lifestyle, you know? We also have a question from Sunny who uh -oh. said... I hear babies in the background. Kids, we want to see the kids. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I was like, this is what I was trying to avoid. Uh-oh, now they're crying. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. These right. are my twins. Oh, nice. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is Zaid. <laughs> and this is Zaya. <laughs> And they're like, what the heck is going on? This is reality, kids. <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty comfortable with two kids, uh, one on each side. <laughs> it's your place. You get comfortable when you're a twin mom. You learn how to be comfortable with that. So I don't know if you can answer this question while um, you've got the two kids with you. Um, Sunny wants to know, what sources do you draw your music from? Um, lots of different sources. Um, you know, my, my first record was inspired a lot by uh, Langston Hughes' poetry, and I, I composed a lot of music to his poetry. Um, and then also, um, you know, field recordings of Haitian songs. Uh oh, we got a banjo player. Um, <laughs> this is like, this is like that video where <laughs> where the dad is doing an interview with his kids. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I listen to a lot of old recordings um, of, of Haitian music or of traditional American music and I'm inspired by all of those things. Right. Um, you know, I got, I, I've gone through several phases of, you know, New Orleans jazz, uh, Piedmont blues, um, Cajun and Zydeco music and um, kind of just playing along with those recordings and learning from those culture bearers. Yeah. Mama. Is there any chance somebody asked because we were referring earlier to Capital Blues? Is there any way that you can play that and maybe the kids will want to listen to it? Capitalist Blues? Yeah, there was a request for you to. Okay, let's try. Let's see if I can do this. No? <laughs> you keep telling me to climb this ladder. I've got to pay my dues, but as I rise, the stakes get higher. no <laughs> no more <laughs> okay well thank you for that lovely encore <laughs> <laughs> i tried i tried i would have done more but uh, that's real life and you know what Layla, you are a real mom and a real musician and a, a really important person and we're delighted to have you i'm gonna ask jamila to come on and and say goodbye to all of us but grateful to you for this performance thank you so much thank you thank you guys thank great you to meet you I look forward to the next time and it'll be. Yeah, yeah next time in person. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Eugene. And thank you, Layla, for sharing your gorgeous music. Oh, my goodness. Eugene, for leading us through that really engaging post show conversation. Um, I think I speak for everyone when I say, what a magical night. Um, mm -hmm. I think you really made being 
shut in a little bit more joyous. So thank you for that. Um, for all of you who tuned in, thank you for staying with us. If you enjoyed tonight's experience, um, we will have more programming just like this. So stay tuned to our Facebook or our fineartcenter.com webpage. Okay. So from my family to yours, stay safe and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.